Is Palantir a secretive company that spies on or even steals your data? Based on my own research, I personally don't think this is the case, but I'm going to explain why. Before we get into that, I want to remind you that I have a weekly free newsletter. The first one is coming out today, 8 p.m. UK time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to make sure you don't miss that, check for a link in the description below. So I'm going to break this video down into about five or so points. And the most logical place to start is understanding why people believe this about Palantir. Quite often in life, fear, panic, worry comes from the unknown, comes from naivety, just comes from a misunderstanding or not understanding. And I think that's probably the case here because let's be honest, Palantir are a very confusing company. Now for a long time, Palantir worked with only the government sector. They worked with the high level, highest confidentiality clients, the government intelligence and defense businesses. This meant that they literally were not allowed to share what they were doing. They were just simply not allowed. This means that yes, they were kind of secretive, but does it mean that they are stealing or even selling data? No, I don't think so. More recently, they have started working with the commercial sector, working with big businesses that we've probably heard of. And because of this, we've now been able to gain more insight into what they do. So I think researching and understanding is the most important thing here. Understanding who Palantir are, what they do and how they do it. And what I will say is Palantir are a software company. They are not a data company. This means that they are not sitting and collecting all of their clients' data, bringing it back to them, going through it, and then deciding what they want to do with it for their own good. That's not the case. They are simply supplying their platforms, their software, their tools to their clients so that the client can decide what data gets used. And then that client can bring all of their sources of data from all their different business areas into one source of truth. Then more importantly, what they can do is they can understand that data. They can utilize that data more effectively to make real world decisions. Now these decisions could make their business revenue go up. It could literally save lives. It really depends on what sector Palantir are working with. Now there's no denying that Palantir offer some incredibly powerful tools. However, it depends on the intentions of the people utilizing these tools as to whether they ultimately get used for good or for bad. Palantir's intentions, I believe, along with the CEO, Alex Karp, are very, very clear and very good. And Alex Karp has said before that he is now thinking that the software is so advanced that he is concerned who he should actually allow access to, who he should sell it to. So I think Palantir have the right intentions, but of course, if it gets into the wrong hands, it could look very different. The second point, we have to remember that Palantir is literally a public company. They have laws that they have to abide by, and they've been around for quite a long time. Sure, they became a public company more recently, but they still existed for many, many years. Do you think that they would have gone all that time acting unlawfully and not getting caught, considering they've been working with some of the most powerful organizations around the world. I don't think that's the case. And if that is the case and they've managed to get away with it for so long, I don't think that they will continue as they expand. When working with Palantir, the company has the ultimate control of what data is used and how their data is used. That is not up to Palantir. Of course, when required by law, as with any company out there, Palantir may have to access and see some data, but that's absolutely normal. That's the case for literally any company if the law tells them they have to do so. But like I said, that's not, an, that's not a usual situation. That doesn't happen every single day. And also there may be some cases where Palantir are having to work with their clients to troubleshoot an issue, but they will need to gain approval to see particular pieces of data ahead of time if they are doing that. But again, that's the same with any software. If you have a piece of software and you need it troubleshooting, you might have to give permission to one of the analysts on the phone to see your data in order to help you. One important thing to remember is that Palantir's business model is not based on the monetization of any personal data. This means that they don't collect, store, nor sell data. And when we're talking about AIP in particular, which is their artificial intelligence platform, this uses LLMs, large language models. And the client literally has the decision as to which data, which data sets 
those LLMs can see. So there is that real fine tuning that real control over what businesses actually want. And this changes the narrative that Palantir are not just going in and just taking all the data they want and then looking through it and like I said, selling it. It doesn't work like that. And when you understand how Palantir's platforms actually work, then you can kind of see that this isn't the case. Palantir take data security incredibly seriously. They have had to because of the type of organizations that they've been working with. And because of this, they have developed functions and tools to enforce it. For example, within a company, users can be restricted in terms of which data they see down to the column and the row. This is done through things called granulated and differentiated access controls. It means you can literally decide which users see what. And also Palantir never use personal data to train their artificial intelligence. And this, this is quoted from Palantir, data is never moved across clients except when clients have entered into an agreement with each other. So you can see how seriously Palantir take this stuff. The third one is kind of common sense, but I think it's quite important. And I kind of alluded to it earlier, but it's this idea that Palantir have been around for a long time and they've worked with many companies, some of the biggest companies in the world. And if they wanted to steal or spy on data, they would have done so already because the data that they would have had access to would have been the most valuable. But that's never happened. We've never known that they've been stealing data. They've never been called up on any unlawful use of data. And then when we think about the NHS specifically, because there are a lot of concerns with the British public about a US so-called spy company infiltrating the British public's data. Actually, the NHS have worked with Palantir before. They've worked with them for a few years now. And the only things that have come out of it is positive, positive outcomes that Palantir have actually helped improve efficiencies, efficiencies, helped save lives. We've never heard of any misuse. So would the NHS and would any of these organizations around the world continue to work with Palantir if they had doubts about your data? I would hope not. This next point is based upon this interesting information I found, and I will link it below, but it talks through the life cycle of data in Foundry. So let's just have a look here. Data life cycles normally start from collection and ends with deletion. Since Palantir's products do not collect data, that's important, and instead support our customers in the processing of their data, we'll approach this topic starting from the data ingestion phase. Below, we outline some distinct phases in the data life cycle that prompt data protection needs. So Palantir care about data protection, not about stealing data. So this is the life cycle here and we'll just have a quick look through them. Ingestion. Data makes its debut in Foundry at the data ingestion phase. This is when data should be hosted in, a, in an appropriate environment. Sensitivity classified, access controlled, cataloged and tagged. Preparation and integration. Data is then transformed and integrated with other data sets to be operationalized via analytics, models, or applications to support users of all different types. Here, we ensure data is prepared to the high, to the right level of granularity, appropriately permissioned, and checked for data quality. That's what I was speaking about earlier with the control of which users see what. Interaction and analysis. Once the data is prepped, it is then time for users to interact with it. This means not only ensuring the data is access controlled, but also that the data is only used for appropriate purposes. Deletion. Eventually, data and related artifacts will no longer be needed and should be deleted to reduce risk. So this shows just how transparent they are, how they have a clear process about how data is uploaded, how it is handled, how it is then deleted when it's not needed. And this all gives a better picture of the, the intentions that Palantir have with your data. The final point is that Palantir is one of only three companies in the entire world, alongside Microsoft and Amazon, to get IL-6 clearance with the US government. This IL-6 clearance is reserved for the storage and processing of information classified to the most secret level. This means that the US government trust Palantir completely to process their data. And it's a real testament to Palantir's commitment to security and compliance. And we know that Palantir have already worked 
with some of the most sensitive and secure data environments out there. And they have an exceptionally strong security track record. Like I was saying earlier, long before they started working with the commercial sector, they were working with just governmental organizations. Now, overall, I don't think that there's any real evidence, tangible evidence out there that suggests that Palantir is spying on or stealing our data. Remember, this is just my personal opinion based on my own research. Do your own research and make your own conclusion on this. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in another one very shortly.